so first me first let me explain what are the things that i would be doing today so previously i have told you that we have four types of developments for developing a view so i have told you we have this json view we have this js view we have the xml view and then we have the html view any view that you develop they always contain two files one is going to be your view file and another one is going to be your controller file in the previous session i have shown you how to create the xml view and the javascript views we have seen in plenty of examples now in this session what i'm going to do is i'm going to create application using the two other different types of views that are available so one would be the html view which you will be using the html programming language for the purpose of developing the uis and another one is json view in which you will be using the json mode of development for developing the views so this is what we are going to do for today and later on i will get started with the concept of fragments so first let us uh, discuss about the html views so like i have told you html view it's basically using the html mode of development so here i am not going to create the instance of object but instead i'm just going to use the plain html tags which is going to instantiate the object itself and it is going to place the object so the one output that you are seeing on the screen is what we are going to develop today so that is basically a panel then inside that you have this label input field and the button control so this is what i have developed in the javascript application as well so we created a simple javascript application displaying the same output now the same thing i am going to develop using the html view so html view like i have told you it's basically a html tags so here you use the div tags of the html to create the control so all you need to do is you only have to specify the type of control that you are creating and what are the properties that has to be populated for that particular control so remember whenever you are going to instantiate a view what you does is you instantiate the class then you fill out the properties that are relevant for that particular control so the same thing that i'm going to do it over here but this time instead of directly instantiating the class i'm going to place them in a div tag with specifying the type of a control in the type attribute then the other properties of the controls are specified using the data attributes so this is exactly similar to the concept of placeholders so if you remember from our previous application if you look at our index.html file whatever we would be doing is we would be instantiating the view and we would be placing the view in a placeholder that is basically a div tag so earlier what we did is we instantiated it and then we placed it now instead of instantiating it and placing it i am directly going to specify the control right away there so whenever i am going to specify there are two important properties actually one is data hyphen sap hyphen ui hyphen type so here i have missed the ui part so the main important attribute is data hyphen sap hyphen ui hyphen type so what this type is going to specify to that particular div tag is that this is the control that you have to instantiate and you have to place it in this particular placeholder so that is what this attribute is going to say now the other attribute is data hyphen the relevant attribute of the corresponding control now say for example for a label control we have discussed some of the important properties like id label for text whereas for input field we have discussed some of the important properties like value required and so on so how we are going to pass the values over here to the div tag is that using the data hyphen id i will pass the id value data hyphen label for i will pass the label for value data hyphen text i will be passing the text value if i wanted to set a default value to the input field then i will be using data hyphen value so basically data is the prefix that you use before the property of the control that you are creating so 
this is just a sample code snippet now let's go to this um, eclipse and we will build an application with a html view so um, i would uh, actually uh, recommend you not to focus too much on this because um, this type of developments are uh, not widely used so when they would be going for html type of development is that whenever they have wanted to partition the screen into multiple divisions that would be uh, you know tedious to do with your normal control because you have to create a layout and accordingly you have to uh, frame them and other things so in that cases they will uh, go ahead with this div tags but basically the html view or json view these are not the preferred mode of development for the desktop application we prefer uh, javascript mode of development and for mobile application we prefer xml mode of development nowadays xml mode of development is widely used so all you have to do is you just have to get into the explore section of your developer guide there you can choose your control and you can just figure out what is the library that you have to include in the xml namespace and what is the control i mean what is the tag that you have to use to create that control so mostly for mobile we would be using xml and for desktop you would be using the js so these two are not preferred mode of development so you don't have to waste much time on this i would request you to concentrate on js as well as xml so let's go ahead and build an application so i'm just using the commons library and i'm going to create it with a initial view here i'm just going to use the html mode of development now we have already seen javascript as well as xml now i'm going to go ahead with the html mode of development right so now if you see here like i have told you two types of files are created one is the view file and another one is the controller file and like i have told you already the controller file it's always going to be your javascript file because jquery is a core for our sap ui and it supports the javascript programming language so the coding or the logic that i'm going to write the business logic or data intensive logic or whatever i'm going to write it's always going to be a java script whereas only the display part it's going to be in a different mode of development now any view you take you will always find this attribute controller name so in the javascript file you have a separate method get controller name in the xml view i have shown you the separate attribute called controller name in which you reference a controller that is associated with this particular view likewise any mode of de development you will always find this controller attributes so here since it is html like i have told you everything comes with a data prefix so data hyphen controller hyphen name is going to be reference to the controller name that is xi13 dot main right so now inside this i'm going to develop my application before that i will show you the placeholder concept so what we did here is we have created a div tag and in the div tag i have created a content placeholder <laughs> meaning that the div tag that i have created is it's empty it doesn't have anything it only has the id later on i create some content and i tell the system that you place it in this particular location so that is exactly what we are doing now what we did here is we have instantiated everything inside a single control and then i have placed that single control in the particular div tag if you remember during the html session i have mentioned that div tag is basically for the purpose of structuring your layout so 
golden days the application they used to structure the header region the main content region sidebar region footer region using this div tag by setting the attributes so if something is record of that particular sort if they wanted a layout to be uh, sh to be showing a different widgets then they may use this mode of development which is easy to achieve so typically a placeholder with an id inside that place inside that placeholder you are going to place your file so this is what is happening the same concept applies for the html mode of development as well so all you are going to do is you are just going to um, create the div tag and inside the div tag in earlier you instantiated it and you placed it but this time instead of you instantiating and placing it you are right away going to tell the system that you instantiate this control create a control of this particular type and you place it in the particular location so the first thing that i'm going to do is i'm going to create a div tag and this time the div tag that i'm going to create is for the outer panel so now like i have told you id is the one property that is relevant to the html so to identify the div tag uniquely i would want to do that the next property there are two important property that i have mentioned in the slide one is the data hyphen sap hyphen ui hyphen type and another one is data hyphen respective attribute of the control which we are developing so data hyphen sap hyphen ui hyphen type it's going to say you that the type of the control that you wanted to instantiate now the control that i wanted to instantiate it panel so what is the class for that sap dot ui dot commons dot panel is the control that i wanted to instantiate then later on i can list the properties of the panel so some of the property that i wanted to fill for the panel is the title that i pass with the prefix data hyphen title is equal to say employee details now inside this particular panel i am going to create my list of control so i create one more div tag this time i am going to create a label so two properties that we have to pass which is data hyphen sap hyphen ui hyphen type that would be sap dot ui dot commons dot label because i wanted to instantiate the label so some of the important property for the label are text property that is what is the text that has to appear which is going to be enter your name and then the next time i'm going to create the input fields so any doubts regarding to this hello yeah it means uh, here in html view uh, mm -hmm. to use data hyphen for all the yes yes is right yes exactly okay. we have to use the data hyphen then the name of the corresponding attribute now for input yeah, field yeah. i would be using data hyphen value to set the default value because i told you right value is the one attribute that is going to value is the one property that is going to have hold the input for fields yeah yeah, yeah. Fine. Fine. SAP hyphen UI hyphen type is going to be SAP dot UI dot commons dot text field is the class that I wanted to instantiate and place it and while instantiating it some of the property that I wanted it to fill is data hyphen value property which is going to be um, say for example something default right now finally I am going to create the button only for the javascript view you will be able to write your logic inside the view because the logic anyway you are going to write is going to be a javascript so since it is already a javascript file it is going to support it but whereas in the cases of other types like xml view or html view or json view you won't be able to write any kind of logic other than layout logic here so all you can do is you can only reference to the method in the controller file 
so id i am just going to create a button and data hyphen sap hyphen ui hyphen type is going to be sap dot ui dot commons dot button is the name of the class uh, hello sir was yeah so that's one dot here uh, yes. actually where you are uh, for every ui element you are writing d tag right yes uh, so like for every element you are going to create one division yes exactly Okay. Okay, fine. Then when I am going to click on the press, I am going to trigger the method. Um, sorry, handle button. So this handle button event, I have to handle it in the controller file. So uh, we are done with our development. Let me just execute and show you the output. So something appears to be wrong. And let us find out what it is. Okay, I have specified the wrong type name. That is the reason why we got the error. So now you can see that our layout has been generated. So also I'm able to handle my event as well. So this is how you are going to develop the HTML views. But trust me, you are not going to use it. You only have to focus on XML and JavaScript. Only these two you have to focus mainly and you can just ignore this HTML as well as JSON because these are complicated mode of development and these are very hardly used. I don't see they are using it anywhere. Even if you are going to search in Google, you will not find any document relevant to this particular two types of views. Okay, because these are kind of non-existent, only conceptual things. Right, so any doubts on this part? Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, actually, I have one document, not related to HTML. You are uh, copying and pasting the URL right in the browser. Which one? The URL you are copying and pasting in the browser. Yes. Uh, like in real time, how we, will we create? Can we create any transaction code like that? No, no, you don't create transaction code. You deploy it in your uh, system. So in that, okay. in that case, what happens? This local host will be replaced by your system URL. Okay, normally if you're going to execute your web render application, you will find the same pattern of URL. So the host name, then the port number, then the name of the application. So when you're going to say, for example, if my server is having the name EMWF67, then this local host is going to be replaced by EMWF67 dot, then the port number of the system, then XS file and the HTML, index.html. Typically, this index.html file will not be the part of your application which you are developing, right? So what is happening is, if you are going to go to your web, web INF file, and if you click on web.xml, then what happens is, if you see here, you have something called welcome file list. Okay, now in the welcome file list, if you see the welcome file attribute is fetched as index.html file. Okay, now whenever I'm going to deploy this application, now the system is going to assume that this is the starting page of the application based upon this particular parameter. Now, if I'm going to uh, copy this index.html file and if I'm going to overwrite it with the another file, say index1.html, then when deploying it, if I want index1.html to be 
picked as a default file then i have to come here and i have to modify this welcome file properties you got the point hello okay okay so this is one way and the other way yeah, yeah that's right which one so this is actually how the system works so if you see your url for the application one will be only till this point up to x is 13 okay now there are how you deploy is there are two ways of deploying one is using the report program that is available in your gateway server or other one is using the team uh, team provider service plugin so now i do not have this team provider service plugin so basically you come here and you click on share project so when you are going to click on share project it is going to take you to the sap ufa app repository so when you choose this and when you're going to click on next it is going to show you the list of connections that you have in your logon pad okay now say this is my gateway system and if i click on okay then it is going to connect to that system using the username and password then i have to provide the username and password there are certain criteria there are certain uh, components that has to be installed in the gateway server only then the team service provider will be able to transport the file from here to there in other cases you will only have to use this report to upload the project into your ui5 you got my point Yes, no, that's what I was going to think. Actually, I think the screen is hanged here. Yeah. Uh, you are telling something like you, the screen is hanged actually. You are not able to say so you are telling. It is hanged actually. Oh. Now we are able to see it. Hello. 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 Yeah, yeah. You are able to see it now. Hello. Uh, now we can see it now. Okay, fine. So what you have to do is just right-click on the project, go to the team, then click on Share Project. You are able to see it, or you are losing. No, now also. No, no. You are losing connection. Okay, uh, this one anyway I will be showing at the time of uh, deploying the UFA application to the gateway server. Okay, so we will uh, look into that at that time. Okay. Okay, I think the screen was not getting refreshed, and it shows three attendees, four attendees. I don't know how many people are attending. Okay, so uh, it's actually only showing 50 percentage view. 50 percentage of viewers are viewing the application. Okay, so shall I go ahead with the next view, next application? Yeah, sure. So please let me know. Please interrupt if you are not able to see the views, see the screen. Yeah, I think now we are able to see it. So the next mode of development that we are going to look at is. We are going to look at JSON view of JSON mode of development. So um, in this uh, view, if you are going to use this JSON mode of development, so JSON programming, I have told you already, it's basically nothing but representation of an object in the form in the terms of key value pair so every control that i wanted to create earlier i have paused it in a div tag in a html application whereas with the json application every tag that i wanted to create i am going to um, create them with the as an object so the object is basically going to contain some of the important inf informations like what is the type of control that it has to create and what are the attributes that it has to fill for that particular control it's exactly same as the div tag that we have created whereas in the div tag i have specified it as an attributes whereas what is the type i wanted to create and what are the properties that i wanted to fill the type and the attribute that i wanted to fill but here in this json mode it is going to be an object inside the object i'm going to represent everything as a key value pair so some of the important attributes of the view are 
the type which is going to represent what type of view it is in case in this case it is going to be at the json view and the other thing it's going to be the controller name property that is the controller that is associated with the respective view so that is going to be the another important property and the third important property is going to be the content property so inside this content property only you are going so content property it's basically an array so inside this array you are going to populate all your controls inside them so that is how you are going to create the layout so whenever you are going to create a control here are some of the important attributes that you have to fill so one attribute would be the type that is the type of control that you are going to create and other attributes are id which specify the unique id for the particular control that you are creating and other properties are the respective properties to the control say for example label for text then you have this title and so on so let me go ahead to the system and create a new project so i'm just creating a new project here and i'm going to name this as exercise 14 so this time it is going to be json mode of development okay i could have closed all this already so now like i have told you two files are created one is json file that is the view file and other one is the controller file that is always going to be the same thing now if you look at the view file i told you three important properties one is the type the another one is the controller name and the third one is content so in the type you specify what type of view we are creating that is the json view and in the controller name you specify the name of the controller that is associated with this particular view and the third property is going to be the content inside which you are going to pass everything as an object right so uh, if you remember from our object initializer class i have taught you that we construct the object within a curly braces so i have also shown you how to initialize the object here here the only thing that we used to do is we directly specify the key value pair as such type that is sap dot ui dot commons dot image something like this right but the thing here is that usually this is the right way of constructing the object but here in this json view since we are going to construct everything dynamically it expect the double quotation for the properties as well so you have to space the place the double quotation for the properties as well so for example in this application i'm going to create a application uh, image then i'm just going to pause this id as image and the third property would be the source from where i should pick the image file so um, let me just So I have just copied a location where the SAP logo was hosted. So I'm just pasting that particular URL from where I wanted to pick the image. So basically I have constructed one object which contains informations like what is the type, what is the ID and what is the source. So the type is going to be control, which means the other properties, whichever I'm going to list in this particular object are going to be the properties of the control. So the type is sap.ui.commons.image then the id is going to be the as specify as image and the source property is going to contain the information on where the logo source is available so we have created one object that is inside the array i have created one object now for the next control i am creating another object so once again the type that i'm going to create now is going to be say for example let's say a button control so sap.ui.commons.image dot 
commons dot button then the id is going to be button and say for example the text property uh, that is going to be let's say display for the handle event that is press which is going to be handle press handle press function of this say uh, just we'll write a pop-up here so now basically what we have done is inside the content array we have constructed two objects and these two objects are going to be displayed now so let me just execute this application guys you're able to see the screen okay so run as web app preview so now you can see that the view has been created with the image in the first place and the button in the second place because the first object that we have constructed is image and the second object that we have constructed is button so any doubts with this what about you imran okay fine so i will go ahead with the next concept which is fragments so the fragments are basically nothing but a reusable entities which is going to generate a same kind of layout so uh, for example if you take in our ab app we have this view in which we can reuse the view over and over again so say for example i have constructed a form i can use the form again and again with a different values if i have constructed a table i can use the table again and again with a different values one suitable example would be your alv report so the alv report it was created only once by the sap now what we are doing we are just calling that report and then we are passing the information to the alv report so the basic thing is the view was already generated then we are calling the view with the different values so this is basically a reusable ones one second if you're going to build a complex layout then you can just reduce the complexity of the layout by creating a part of a layout in a different segment and then just insert it over here so that you can do or you know you can just build it right away so this is basically for the purpose of modularizing the layout itself so there are two types of fragments one is js fragment and another one is xml fragment so js fragment it's similar to that of js views except that it is not a view so and the xml uh, fragment is similar to that of xml view except that it is not an xml view now how do i say that this is a view and how do i say that this is a fragment so whenever we have created the fragment sorry whenever we have created the view if you had noticed the view would be having the file extension dot view dot uh, dot view dot js or dot view dot xml so this would be the extension of the view file 
but whereas for the fragment the extension of the file is going to be dot fragment dot js or dot fragment dot xml and for the class that i'm using for creating the view now say for example let me show it in this screen so if you see here i mean let me open up a javascript so if you see here the class that i'm using for the javascript is sap.ui.js view whereas for the fragment i would be using sap.ui.js fragment the rest of the things are going to be the same the only thing is in the fragment i'm going to create i'm going to modularize the layout itself so you understood why we are going for fragment hello hello uh, can you repeat the, the particular point which you said in the folder in the folder yeah, i'm in the screen uh, project project see here yes. now whenever we have created the view if you see here the code that was generated was for creating the view was which one yeah. uh, your screen was showing uh, that ppt now it is showing the uh, screen okay. yeah now i am showing the project only yeah, yeah. It is, it's okay now okay so in the main.view.js file if you have seen the view that is the class that is instantiating the view is sap.ui.js view right now in case of a fragment it is going to be sap.ui.js fragment and the rest of the things are going to be same thing okay okay, okay? Yeah, fine yeah so basically i am going to generate a part of a layout as a separate file and then i am going to insert it wherever i wanted so that's how we can simply ex explain the fragment so there are two types of fragments like i have told told you one is the js fragment and another one is the xml fragment for the js fragment use the javascript mode of development and for xml fragment use the xml mode of development so js fragment is exactly similar to that of javascript view whereas xml fragment it's exactly similar to that of xml view except that these are not views so a view it consists of a view file as well as a control file whereas the fragment it only contains the fragment file so fragment it's quite a new concept for you but in our case it's just a reusable entity that we are going to use so the fragment it's a long it's a, actually a concept of web application development whereas how in web application developer are reusing the layouts that they wanted okay so js fragment like i have told you it's exactly similar to that of you now instead of sap.ui.js view we will have this sap.ui.js fragment as the class for the js fragment file then the next thing is whenever we created a view a view by default is having the reference of the controller but whereas you can assign the controller to the fragment at the time of instantiating the fragment or you can just ignore it if you ignore it then the fragment will not be having any controller reference which means in case of javascript you have to handle the event within the fragment itself <clears throat> once again now say for example i have created a form to display in the fragment now for this particular form i wanted to display different values according to the different instantiation so what i can do is i can instantiate the fragment once then to that fragment i will set certain set of model so whatever is the model value that is matching that that is going to be displayed for that particular instance now if i wanted to create one more uh, similar layout then i can instantiate the fragment again and i can create a new binding so that whatever the value that i have binded that will be displayed so the same is the case with xml fragment it's similar to the xml view except that they do not have the view as the root tag so just like we had this sap.ui.js view as the class for this fragment sorry the class for the view when you are going to see this xml view um,
now say for example now when you are going to go ahead with the xml view if you see the root element the root element is going to be the view file but whereas in case of fragment it is not going to be the view tag it is going to be any control straight away that i can use so in this example i will also explain the concept of dialog boxes okay so uh, the binding syntax is same as how we perform the binding and other things the xml uh, fragment can also be loaded using the modules that is the module that i have teach you before jquery.sap.require you can use that as well for creating the instance of this you can use the class sap.ua.xml fragment for xml fragments whereas sap.ua.js fragment for the js fragments so uh, let me just go ahead and create a simple application first i would be creating an application with the javascript fragments Hello, guys, you are able to hear me? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so now I just have created a simple project. Okay, now say for example, in this particular application, I'm just going to construct a form. Now, uh, say for example, I'm just going to create a simple form using the form layout variable new sap dot ui dot layout dot form dot simple form so i'm just giving this form id i think i have already done this uh, simple form so i'm just creating it Now, if I execute the application, it is going to display me a form with only one row. Okay, so you can see that the title that I have provided, then the single row that I have created, that is the label and the input field which I have created. Right, now, say for example, if I'm going to use the same kind of layout in different places, in one place, say for example, I have an application which will be showing me the, um, in, in in the input mode change mode uh, sorry a create mode change mode or display mode so in that case i don't have to create a separate view and the same kind of layout for each and everything so all i can do is i can just create the same view and i can reuse it according to the different functionality so now assume that this is the form that i wanted to build then what i can do is i can just create it as a separate fragment and i can reuse it n number of times that i wanted now say for example instead of having this built as a view i'm just going to have this built as a fragment so for that what i'm going to do is in the xs15 folder i'm going to create a folder called fragments 
and all my fragments that I'm going to develop for this particular application, I'm going to store it in this particular folder. So the extension for the fragment would be fragment dot either JS or XML. Now say uh, say for example EMP date details dot fragment dot JS. So now the name of the fragment that I have created is EMP DET which has the extension dot fragment dot JS. Unlike your view, the code will not be generated by default. You have to write your code. So what I have told you is SAP dot UI dot JS fragment is the class that you have to instantiate. It is going to take two parameters. One is the ID and another one is the logic. So in the ID, you have to specify the name. So the name would be exercise 15. So size 15. Actually, you are specifying the path exe or ca sc15 dot fragments dot emp dat dot emp dat right then here create content is the function that you have to use to create the layout logic so now the form that whatever I have developed I am going to uh, place it here in the create content function. So now this fragment upon instantiation will create me this particular form. So clear till this point of time. Any doubts? Hello. Oh yeah. No right. Yeah, you place the old content here. Right? Yes, yes. You, you place that content in fragment, right? Yes, so, yes, I have placed the content in the fragment. So now, yes. whenever I'm going to instantiate this fragment, the same content is going to be created. Yeah, it may be like top include, uh, we use text elements like that, uh, we are using, right? No, it's just like your function module. You are using your function module, right? The same logic is going to get executed. So just like this, yeah, yeah. When, the, when the same logic is going to be executed, the kind of layout that you wanted is going to be created. Okay, okay, fine, thank you. Okay. Now inside this view, I'm just going to instantiate the fragment and I'm going to display it. Okay, so for instantiating the fragment, what I have to do, I have to create the instance of sap.ui.js fragment. I don't think I need this new. So JS fragment, then what is the fragment that I have to instantiate? Exercise 15 fragments.emp dead. So that is basically the name that we have provided for the fragment. So this is what I have to give. And I create this. Now while instantiating this particular fragment, I can either pause the reference of the controller file that is associated with the view to the fragment. So that for the fragment that we have instantiating, the O controller will also act as the controller file. Right, so now I just going to return the fragment. So now what it does is whenever I'm going to instantiate this particular line, it is going to instantiate me this particular content completely and it is going to provide for me. Now if you're going to uh, refresh this, you are still going to get the same output. Now say for example, I have instantiated it one more time. Let's see what happens now. Uh, yeah, whenever you are creating the fragments, you should not give the static IDs. So what this would result is whenever I'm going to create the instance of it for the second time, then it is going to tell me that already there is a file with the same instance, which is why there is a duplication error and you will not be able to proceed. So now say for example, I'm going to create the instantiation once again fragment one. Now I'm going to instantiate the same thing again. And if you see now, okay, I have to return the both things. I'm returning it as an array. Oh, frag, month, fr 
fragment one. I think duplication error came. Okay, so how many number of times that I'm instantiating that many number of times it is going to get created Just give me a minute Okay Okay, so you got the point Yes, yes, Vinny. Yes, yes. Just give me a minute. Uh, I don't know who is the people I'm calling. Okay, so shall we proceed with the next one? Uh, hello, sir. Yeah. yeah. Hello. Yeah, yeah, tell me. Uh, you're telling some duplicate. You're telling some duplicate error when you're coming, right? Yes. The reason would be, say for example, if I'm going to set a static ID over here while creating. Okay, okay. So what would happen is, first time when the instance is creating, it will be created properly. The second time when you say create instantiating, what would happen is, it is it is trying to create the element again with the same ID. So that was the reason why you okay. get the error. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, so for this, what you did, you haven't mentioned the label one. Yes. You don't have to do that. Okay. Okay. So, no need to give the label name. No, you don't have to give it. Actually, there is some uh, method called this dot create ID. So that method, okay. if you use, that is going to uh, create you the unique ID by itself. So when you are going to create with that one, you are not going to uh, have the proper references. So when you are going to use the fragment, you don't have to create it with ID. So you can let the system to create it with its own ID. Okay. Okay, so that you will not get this duplication error. Okay. Um, okay. Okay, so shall I go ahead and go ahead with the XML fragment? I uh, have one more question, sir. Yeah. Well, you don't like... Um, the same form we can display in edit mode and one in display mode. Yeah. So can you show me that one? That one. Uh, by using the same example. See, uh, actually you can try that one. I will tell you. Okay. For that we have to create the model and perform the binding actually. Okay. So mm -hmm. it's a bit difficult for me to show us a demo. See, basically, here I have this record property. I have the record property here as well. Okay. Okay. So when I'm going to bind with this, uh, I have to bind it with the record property as true. Here I have to, in the model, I have to construct the record property as false for the second instance. So that one I will show you tomorrow. Okay. Okay, fine. Okay. So I think it's time, 11 o'clock. Uh, we will do the XML review as well for tomorrow. The XML fragment and I will go ahead with the table tomorrow. And before that, I just wanted to uh, confirm the topics that we have completed. Okay. So I have already marked it. So this one we have done XML view and views completely done. In the model, tomorrow I will be doing this word data model. Then fragment part is done. Actually, fragment XML fragment is supposed to be done. Okay. 
Sridhar, can you tell me this file? This file? Which file? Yeah, actually, you have a mark on there, right? Uh, syllabus file. You cannot see the whole... Yeah, it's a syllabus file. Okay, okay, I will send you. I mean, the marked one, not the original one. The, we have done coloring, right? Yeah, this yeah. file. Okay. Just to check what are the topics uh, we have finished. Okay, okay, fine. So, uh, some of the okay. topics actually I have planned, but I haven't completed on the correct respective days. So, before completion only, I have okay. done these things. Consuming all data service into the application. So, this thing we haven't done. Mm -hmm. Actually, this thing I planned for the table as well as this one. So, I will rectify okay. this one and I will show you. Which one? Probably by next week we will get into the gateway. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So uh, after tomorrow's class, most probably I will get into this theory app. So when we are doing that one only, we will cover rest of the concepts. Can you cover? Uh, okay, what is the end? At the end of this session. This one we have right separate one for gateway. Yes. In that this we will be doing. We are uh, we are unable to hear. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, voice is coming from here. Uh, actually, uh, there was some uh, interruption from the other end. No, I'm able uh, to hear. I mean, yeah, if Imran is so uh, open, uh, it shows very much sound for me. I'm not okay. sure for you. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, what data is at the end of these questions or how I why because uh, I mean, uh, no, from next week uh, we'll be doing it. Yeah, and uh, we need also some suggestion from you, like uh, uh, um, using Odata, what are the models, and uh, I mean, uh, maybe you are working in Odata, right, in the project? Yeah. Uh, if you give some examples uh, to put in resume or whatever, uh, prototypes, I uh -huh. mean, uh, some various models, they use, proto I mean, Odata. I will share you one real-time application. Yeah, that would be great. Why? Because... Uh, at least we know, I mean, like objects are BAPIs and uh, those Odata objects you can show in uh, resume and we prepared uh, a prototype or whatever like that. Okay. That's why I'm asking. Okay. Thank you, Srin. Okay then. Bye.